Today marks the eighth day of deliberations in Los Angeles for Harvey Weinstein's second rape and sexual assault trial. The former movie producer is currently serving a 23-year prison sentence out of New York after being convicted for sex crimes in 2020. In this latest trial, Weinstein faces two counts of rape and five counts of sexual assault involving four women. He has pleaded not guilty to all charges. If convicted, Weinstein could be sentenced to 60 years to life in prison. Joining us now, CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. Uh, Jessica, jurors have now been in deliberations for more than a week. Put that into context for us. Is it surprising? Is that normal for a trial of this nature? And, and part of, I think, what makes it a little bit different for people is that this is the second time that he is facing very similar charges with a different group of women. Great questions. And if we're to put it in context of the second time he's facing similar charges, this is actually a more complicated case. There are more counts. There are seven counts here, as you said. There are more alleged victims. There are four alleged victims here. And in New York, I believe that they deliberated for about five days. Mm -hmm. Here they've deliberated for eight, but one of the days was a very short day. Another piece of context for viewers, the New York juror form was about one page. In this case in Los Angeles, the juror form that's been posted online, the verdict form, it's 16 pages. So this is a complicated case. There are a lot of different counts to consider uh, for alleged victims. And if we, again, compare it to New York, they're about on track considering that there are just more decisions here for them. So 16 pages, Jessica, can you break down for us what exactly the jurors are tasked with determining and the difficulties they could be encountering in making their determinations? Great question. So as you said, there's seven counts here and they include rape and sexual assault. And in some of the counts, and I think this could make it more complicated for the jurors, there's something called lesser included offenses. So for instance, you might see sexual battery and also sexual battery with restraint. That asks the jurors to make a number of different decisions on these questions. Now, what else could account for the fact that obviously at this point, all we know is the jurors didn't go back there and say, we're all in agreement on all of these counts. Well, these are nuanced questions of consent. And we know from reporting based on the New York trial and what some of the jurors who gave interviews said is that something very similar happened in the sense that they went back there and there was no unanimous agreement at all. It took them time to go through charge by charge alleged victim by alleged victim, and really try and sort through those issues of consent. In this case, Weinstein's defense attorney has said, you can't trust these women, their word is not gospel, and he's really put the credibility of the alleged victims on trial here. And so it's for the jurors to look through that. That doesn't happen quickly, and I suspect that they're having a vigorous discussion. One other interesting thing to note, as of right now, I don't believe that they have sent any notes to the judge or the attorneys. So they haven't said we're at a sticking point or we need more testimony or we need testimony read back, I mean. So that's also interesting. They haven't said we're in trouble, we need help. Hmm. Uh, Jessica, as we noted, Weinstein's already serving decades in prison for a separate sex crimes trial. It's possible even if he came back not guilty on all these counts, he could still serve the rest of his days uh, incarcerated. Um, but how might that part of the equation be impacting jurors' decision making? Well, obviously, it's something that the jury is aware of. And whenever you hear that there's a conviction for similar allegations, that's something that the jurors can't put out of their mind. But part of what the jurors were asked in jury selection and what they have to do right now is they have to take each of these counts and look at the facts in this case and ask whether or not they think that the activity rises to the level of proof beyond a reasonable doubt of criminal action here. And so, yes, what happens in other cases certainly is something that the jury considers. And in a variety of cases, sometimes it's seen as motive and uh, practice of the alleged uh, perpetrator. But they have to be able to look at each of these alleged victims, each of these alleged counts, and make an independent assessment. And again, I think that's why we're having this discussion of it seems like it's taking a while. There are a lot of decisions for them to make.
Interesting. All right, Jessica Levinson, thanks for staying on top of it for us. Thank you.